Good morning, I'm Flip Mellinger. I'm the ACA for Utility Services. Or uh, solid waste. And I explained to the board that, you know, all the infrastructure stuff, I kind of helped corral everybody to get that done. And it does paint a glim picture, but that picture doesn't account for all the, the great stuff that's happened throughout the county. So when you see these things, it was, it was meant to focus on the, the needs. Uh, in our solid waste area, we don't really have a lot of problems. Uh, our class one landfills are in great shape. Um, not, a lot of, not a lot of problems in that area. The uh, ash that we've got, we've got a couple of programs right now that we're working on. Uh, our goal will be to um, separate the metals out of that ash and then segregate the material to use in building construction or in road construction. And we just got approval from DEP to actually use that ash in the concrete for the biosolids <coughs> facility that we're going to construct out there. So we're moving forward with that. We're going to prove that it works and we're going to prove that it'll support weight. The waste energy facility, it's got a total capacity of 343,000 tons a year. That, you know, averages about 1,000 tons a day. Um, right now we're putting about 323,000 tons through that and that's really a sweet spot. That's where we want to keep it because it doesn't overstress the boilers and the turbine and all the, the mechanics of the entire thing. Um, but we're nearly at capacity. Um, we're going to have to expand the facility or we're going to have to divert flow. We're, growing we're a growing community. We've got more people coming in here. Uh, by 2030, uh, it'll be exceeding capacity. And we're hoping that, and you may have seen it on the news the other day, we've got a survey out right now. Please go online, look, at the, look for the survey. It's on the county's website. Uh, tell us what you think about recycling. That's our goal is to try to divert some of the trash that's going into this burner and try to recycle it. Uh, that'll allow us, and we're also gonna be talking to the board about um, possibly increasing the solid waste assessment, uh, just a couple dollars. Um, and we're looking at our entire rate throughout the utility. New construction occurs right now there's no capital charge or impact fee for solid waste. Uh, we've got a little bit, I think we're high on our water impact fee. We may end up diverting some of that. We'll ask the board to divert some of those dollars from the water over to solid waste. And by increasing the flow into the recycling, we hope to take 35% of all the trash out of the burners, move it over to recycling. That'll allow us uh, It'll delay the, the period in which we need to expand the facility. The cost of that's $190 million. We've got about 40 of that in our pocket. So we need, to, we need some time to generate some more money. On the water and wastewater side of things, um, our wastewater plants, we've recently completed a capacity analysis reports on all of the facilities. Uh, you can see the stars up here. There's four facilities that either need to be replaced or expanded. Um, we've got four of them in the, in the uh, capital improvement plan. Uh, we're getting ready to move out with Shady Hills, or I'm sorry, Wesley Center. We've got uh, final drawings on it now. I haven't seen the specs yet, but I've reviewed the drawings. Uh, we're ready to go to contract on that. Based on uh, what we're getting from ind industry newsletters and whatnot, there could be an infrastructure bill or uh, program that comes out from President Trump. Uh, so we're kind of holding off to see what happens with that. If there's federal money available, we're gonna grab that and use the 30 million that we we're gonna have to take out of pocket on other infrastructure projects. Uh, Shady Hills is also in design. Uh, we've got some, some uh, issues out there that we have to correct or we're going to be under a consent order. Embassy Hills is going to have to be upgraded and Cypress Manor has to be replaced. It's falling apart. It's a little little thing, 
Um, we're working with Dade City. Uh, there's also an economic development hope for that Lacucci area. So we're trying to figure out if we can just transfer all that over to Dade City and allow them to take over that service area <coughs> through the one to Lacucci. Uh, on the water plant side of things, the little road water plant uh, that's kind of across the street from Wendy's, that plant, um, it's kind of a Frankenstein setup of their pumps in there. They had pumps and then they increased the size of it and they added more pumps and then they added more pumps. And I don't think they ever synchronized what the pumps are doing. We feel that they're potentially fighting against each other. So we've got a project to take out all the Frankenstein stuff and start over with something that'll work more efficiently. Other than that, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, our lift stations, we've got about 597 of them. Uh, prior to last year, I think we, we had a funding in there of $200,000 last year. We bumped that up to $2 million um, to try to get our uh, renovation cycle back to a 15-year. Uh, so we got still have a shortfall, about $3 million. We're not going to cover all that this year, but we're going to cover more of it. We're going to work toward getting to the 15-year renovation. Our fire hydrants, we've got about 6,500 of them currently. We're on a 40 to 45 year schedule for renovation. We need to be at 25. And when I'm talking about renovation, that's rebuilding the hydrant. Um, we had $50,000 in our current budget. Uh, we're short about 130. We're going to take that out and we're going to make that happen in 2018. Our valves, we've got over 13,000 valves in the system. Currently, we've got two trucks, two operators out working on these valves. We're uh, on a 35 to 45 year cycle. Uh, we'll be, we need to move to 25. Um, that program will also be funded in 18. Uh, pipes, you can see our shortfall there is seven and a half million. We'll work toward that. We're not gonna get there this year. And the distribution, so one was collection wastewater distribution water about five and a half million dollar shortfall so all in all um, our wastewater shortfalls are about ten million dollars a year in the wastewater side of things and six and six million in water and capital investment we've got quite a bit uh, to work on thanks Sir. Morning, I'm Eric Breitenbach, facilities director. The board currently owns just shy of two million square feet of inventory, and we're leasing about 230,000 square feet. So we're already at a shortfall for space to accommodate government operations. Of that two million that we own, just over 200,000 of it's rated recently in either poor or very poor condition. So as county, as the county population grows, uh, government functions will need to expand to meet the needs of the new popular, the expanded population. So to satisfy our current shortfall and meet existing, uh, we've identified over 34 projects ranging in the cost of 450 million to about just shy of 600 million, depending on the configurations and quality of the projects. And it was developed with a 15 year implementation plan. And you can see on the board, uh, years one to five, seven projects, anywhere from 260 to 285 million your six to 10, 17 projects, anywhere from 115 to 171 million. And the last three years, 10 projects with cost projected between 76 million and 127 million. <coughs> On the board is a breakdown of our current facility evaluations. Uh, again, just about 25% of it has been rated in poor or very poor condition. Good morning, Kelly Burry, Parks, Recreation and Natural Resources. It's always fun to go after the big departments that are telling you how much paving, how many culverts, bridges and facilities that they manage because they don't take into account hours. 
And I will tell you that we are part of public safety. We are part, we are the proactive approach to crime prevention. We keep idle minds busy so they're not out on the streets for the sheriff's office. We're also the uh, quality of life arm of this county. Without us, you would not have businesses moving here because we are the reason that their families want to move to the West Coast. So real quick, I'm gonna go through some of our infrastructure that we do look at. We budget this uh, reactively with our budget and capital. Uh, the majority of our budget comes from the general fund. And so we are not an enterprise fund. We do get impact fees, but they do not cover the needs that we have out there. Uh, so we, you see that we have roads that we maintain about five and a half miles. We have parking lots and square footage. We have 37 miles of trails that we also pave. We have piers and boardwalks. We have seawalls that we have to maintain. We have irrigation of our fields that we have to maintain. And of the buildings, Eric's group maintains almost 80,000 square foot, but I have a little over 160,000 that I still maintain on our inventory. And that's your pavilions, your dugouts, your restrooms, your concession stands, and things like that. And I think a lot of that is lost in, trans in the translation as we're moving forward on our budgets. This is a little bit of an overview of where our needs are. Uh, November, the board adopted the Parks Master Plan, which was our guiding document for the next year of growth. And within that, it identified that from the 2001 Master Plan, we still had approximately $14.5 million of amenities that we needed to build to keep up with that growth. It also identified about 14.1 million of deferred maintenance, items that we have not maintained in the past few years because of the economic downturn. The previous slides <coughs> identified if I were to keep a level of service for the replacement of those to, um, for the public safety and level of service uh, um, outlook, we would need approximately $6.4 million to be able to do that replacement schedule. That's in addition to the deferred maintenance that's out there. And then our master plan, I mentioned the 14.5 million from the 2001 master plan. It also identifies to keep up with the next 10 years growth, about $120 million worth of new park amenities that we need to put in. Uh, great, great I thought on that is the uh, connected cities that passed yesterday is about 12,000 units coming in. Uh, where are those people going to recreate? North Bexley, under review, where are those people going to recreate? Luckily, they do have a district park identified in it. We then need to find the dollars to be able to build those amenities. And that's part of that $120 million. But as we build the new amenities, you also have to keep in mind that we have to operate it and maintain those. So it's about 5% of the construction costs that needs to be looked forward to for your O&M. So it's a high dollar value. I think Parks and Rec has been uh, kind of underneath everything else because you don't think of that. But when you start looking at it in the public safety, uh, crime prevention, and economic development arm, you start to take a different look at it. We maintain the, um, the water areas, all of your rivers and things like that. So we are pushing our coastal nature areas for people to come and visit our county. Without the maintenance of the boat ramps, the improved parking for your boats, you won't have people coming in, or if they do, they won't come back. So um, that's a quick down and dirty of what we have out there and what we have to look forward to. I appreciate your attention. Debbie, pull it through here. So Margaret or Chris? Chris, it's you. Morning. So what we got here? Uh, 
basically our division through, through uh, project management is responsible for different um, road improvements, including roadway, safety improvements, sidewalks, signalization. We uh, manage over $320 million worth of projects each year. <coughs> Several of the different projects, there's a large outcry from the different communities for different sidewalks, sidewalk, or multi-use uh, paths throughout the, throughout the county. These are, have to go through a ranking prioritization process, and there is a, uh, a process that we go through to make sure that it's a fair and an impartial um, method that we follow for each project. Different roadway improvements, there's a <coughs> estimated cost of just under $500 million. There's 23 different projects that are in our CIP program. And this is based on the needs of the county and the different developments that are occurring to keep up with the, uh, the future demands of the county. Okay, any questions? <laughs> Thank you. Ralph here. Ralph. Where'd Ralph go? He's coming from the back. <laughs> Taking a tour of the Good morning, Ralph Lair, Government Affairs Officer for PASCO. So, so basically, I kind of assist the other departments in the county by, by trying to get money from whether it be the state or the federal. I play defense and we watch legislation that comes out from the state how it's gonna impact the county um, or even at the federal level. I also interact with our, our local governments and, uh, and, and make sure that we, we're holding hands together as we, we make the lives of our citizens uh, in Pasco County a, a better place to live, uh, work and play. Uh, so uh, coming down last year, we had a couple of issues that across the state, the 67 counties uh, that we had been dealing with, legislation that uh, had a negative impact. Uh, we, we maintain and, and uh, uh, have to house uh, or, or, or detain juvenile offenders. Uh, the state was supposed to be doing a 50-50 uh, match with us. Instead, they were making the counties pick up the whole tab. Uh, we finally reached an agreement where we, uh, we're able to <coughs> now get, do a 50-50 match. Another one that would have had a negative impact was a relocation of utilities bill uh, in that bill. Uh, if uh, we had sidewalks uh, or, or, or roads and we needed to do, do expansion into the right of way when the utilities are on the side there and, and have to move uh, the uh, utility um, companies wanted the counties to pick up the tab uh, to do that but a part of the agreement uh, that's worked out when they come in is they're supposed to pick up the tab so we held that off uh, to make sure that didn't happen it may come back again this year we'll monitor that and make sure it doesn't happen uh, anticipated issues uh, this year, as always, budget shortfall. Uh, and how that will impact us is, you know, where, uh, you know, we hope to, you know, get some funds coming back to the county uh, and incentives. You might refer to it as pork. You know, we, we refer to it as, you know, helping our counties and, and helping your local communities. Um, Amendment 2 uh, passed by the voters, and now the uh, legislature is in charge of how that's going to be implemented. And that's going to impact the counties. Uh, to make sure we know where we're going to have to locate these individuals, how many of these uh, um, facili uh, facilities will be in our counties. Uh, so it's going to have a, a, you know, a, a, a negative or positive impact on our county. So we're monitoring that. Uh, another big one is our Constitutional Revision Commission. Florida's unique. Every 20 years, uh, the governor, the president of the Senate, and the uh, Speaker of the House uh, get to pick individuals uh, to come together and uh, come up with ways of revising our Constitution, uh, adding in new laws that they're not able to do at the uh, legislative process. Uh, so they may come up uh, with uh, several ideas that will come back to the voters in 2018 uh, and, and the voters that ultimately get to decide. Those are changes that are hard to uh, correct, if you will, or, 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 or amend. Uh, once those are uh, in place, those become law and like in stone. Uh, so 
those can have a negative impact. Where they want to, what they would like to do at the legislative process is slowly whittle away our home rule, slowly whittle away our ability to bring in funding. Our funding at the local level is through uh, uh, property taxes, the majority of it at the state level, it is through sales tax. Um, so in conclusion, uh, as the needs for services increase, legislators have pursued tax cuts uh, and other policy changes that restrain local government's ability to raise additional funding to meet existing and future demands. So that's part of my job to monitor, to uh, again play defense, uh, make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, we are also members of the Florida Association of Counties with our fellow 66 counties to make sure that does not happen. We each have unique stories of how it's going to impact us. Um, with competing interests at uh, all state uh, level of funding, Pasco County faces challenges that require ag aggressive legislative programs to uh, pursue policy changes and appropriations for the greater benefit of its citizens. Working with our commissioners, we came up with our platform, our legislative agenda. I call it the Sears wish list book. It was huge, it was big. We whittled it down and we got to five uh, policy issues and five appropriations issues that are high priority that are gonna have a positive impact on us. And, and those are the issues I'm currently pursuing uh, with our, legis uh, our Florida legislature. At the same time, there are a couple issues coming down, especially with the, uh, the new president, President Trump, uh, that may have a positive impact. So I'm working with our, our congressional delegation uh, to see if they can assist, uh, again, uh, that uh, it's gonna have an impact, a positive impact on our county and our citizens here. Um, priority issues that we have this year at the state level, a lot of infrastructure needs. So Michael Garrett came up and, and, and came up and said, here's our, our, our big price tag for things that we need to get done. I try to assist him in getting dollars to help offset those costs. Uh, we have two major road projects that we're trying to seek funding for and uh, all of the stormwater projects that, that Mike uh, mentioned. Those are on our list and we've asked our, our legislative uh, delegation to assist us with those needs. Uh, at the, uh, we're also looking at the National Flood Insurance Program at the federal level uh, and how that uh, impacts us. Um, the rates, uh, as you know, uh, here on the west side of, uh, or on the west side of our county, uh, I would say west of uh, 19, a lot of homes flooded during the uh, uh, two hurricanes that we had and in the past summer. Uh, so you got to make sure that they have the coverage that they need and uh, uh, you know they, they have a way, a way to fix their homes or get their get out of their home. So we're watching that and how that's going to impact us. Uh, Health care reform, we're probably going to see changes at the federal level. How's that going to impact us in our Medicaid costs at the state level and what we, we will be paying for those indi individuals who had individual care under Obamacare, if you will. Uh, economic Development Administration uh, could be eliminated at the state level. Uh, visit Tourism uh, might be another one, or Visit Florida might be another one that's under uh, attack here at the state level right now. Um, different sides, we have the House says, is that a positive impact to our state? The Senate you know, thinks that it does, so it's going to be interesting to watch how that debate is played out over the 60-day session coming up. Uh, social services funding, expecting significant domestic spending pressures, uh, and then we're uh, focused on apprenticeship and, and net metering issues. Uh, these are issues that were uh, targeted by our county commission uh, where they would like to see an improvement in our county. So at the state level or the federal level, there might be policies or funding that might be able to assist on those issues. 